All right, um, DOS boot. Let me just say I agree with everything in this video. Okay, now that that's out of the way, um, a little side issue here. Uh, my face. Now that first face you showed of me also a, a clown face, and uh, and I notice a lot of the faces in figures you do, you know, are in a style like this. But still, let's just look at this and give my uh, decomposition of it. I mean, I'm curious what you would say to any of this, but I'm not going to ask you because as an artist, some artists don't want to talk about their art. Many feel they have to be kind of dishonest about their explanations, and I don't really want to ask for that. On the other hand, if you want to offer it, I'm totally into hearing your point of view. But let me just tell you what I take from this. Um, okay, I've showed various people the first one and the second one. I would say the first one, as you described, sort of accidental. And though I, I, I joked about wanting the painting, and there's truth to that joke, I would love the painting. Uh, I don't want to pay for it, and I'm not super, like, eager to have it because of my feeling about unfinished works of art. Um, I, I believe we're all artists, um, and one of the things that discriminates between the first rank of a, of a real artist that I'm, you know, prone to, like, becoming really smitten with or almost deifying, I have trouble not deifying artists of this, what I would call this first rank. It's, it's finished artwork. That's important. My mom, I love her art. She doesn't sign a lot of them and just refuses to call them finished. There's some interesting aspects to that. And, um, and I definitely am open to an artist that doesn't finish work on purpose, plans not to finish it. That might be okay. It's, it's weird. I have a weird art, art aesthetic. It has a lot to do with intentionality and whatnot. But anyway, um, so, but also I could see that that was this incident. I wouldn't have thought that was me unless you pointed out. This one I might not have thought, but I could see me in it. Okay, so now let's get into this. Now, when I showed one friend who's a young artist, uh, um, really quite good and, and getting better and better all the time, uh, you know, she's like, does this guy like you? You know, everybody agrees it's, it's creepy. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I you know I'm like I yeah he I, he does like me. I think is this evidence he doesn't or something? Um, the clown face stuff. I mean, see I, I I interpreted this positively, but also satirically. Like one thing I'm a fan of it in Roman times, a victorious general would come back and there'd be some buffoon that would walk along with the victory parade, just insulting you know in, insult comic on, on uh, you know, on Caesar or whomever the general was. And it's just sort of a tradition to keep things humble. And the mocking part of this, it's built in. I mean, to be considered a two-faced clown doesn't sound positive, does it? But, but I see a positive angle to that just in the sense that I want to be crit criticized and critiqued. Um, but also, I mean, there's more than that. And I'm wondering, am I just justifying? Am I trying to make it a positive thing? But... I feel when I use all these filters, this is like a clown face, and one reason I do this is to break the idea of too much reality. You know, if I'm always in the same backdrop, even if it was by accident, but certainly if I was one of these people that like chose my favorite bookshelf and always made sure there was a bookshelf and a globe, and you know, that can seem real consistent and solid and real. That person likes globes and books and he likes his study. And that could even be true. But there's an unreality because it presents a false sense of reality. This is a window. And uh, what better way to emphasize that than making sure that it's all different kinds of distorted glass in the window from time to time. Look through different windows. And it literally could look like clown face. If you look at my uh, list of videos, you'll see a lot, just all these different filters and different colors and uh, so there's that. Now the two-faced part, again, I, I looked at the expressions, and one of those is kind of worried and donkey-faced, but I would say well-intentioned, kind of like, <laughs> like like a stupid side with it, but, you know, not, not mean. And, uh, and then this other one, to me, looks genuinely happy. Uh, so... I think, I see this as an appreciation of, you know, I try to be very straightforward and honest with what I think, and consistent, and I, and I do that, but um, like I said, I think there's an element of mask always, and unreality, so, 
I see this as sort of a, I don't know, an acknowledgement of my, of my mask and just how thin it is, but also how distorted it can be. Um, it depends on who you are. Like seeing me in this coloring to a lot of people, that really would make me unreal. It'd be hard to hook what I say to a real person. Other people have no such problem. It might even make it easier. Uh, depending on your artistic aesthetic and, and other aspects of your personality and your perceptive uh, metabolism. So, um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, this is this is how I, in, I interpret this. Um, there, there is the weird thing for me too that 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 painting I showed of my mother's. Um, and, and what is this element that I'm some sort of a semi-demonic clown? Now you, the way I understand you, I, I don't know, um, but you know, I think you certainly are capable, whether you actually have a positive attitude about this particular sort of image or not, it is certainly possible for you to have a value of it. But that might just be having a value for a demonic thing. Now to me, when I think of myself in this, uh, like that there's something scary, <laughs> it, it, because my, you know, I'm also gentle, overly don't kill that bug kind of person. Um, it, it always reminds me of Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke where it's like a constructo destructor, you know. Someone that brings you into a new era it, it means the end of a previous era. So it's like I've always thought that Armageddon for a culture does come and it means it's when their culture dies. And another culture rises up from the ashes. And so the creator of, of a new culture, who are multiple, might be seen as a destroyer, but it's all perspectivism. That, that creator can literally destroy nothing but even just by showing a new construction could could be helping to finish the last one and it appears more like they're finishing it but obviously if it's collapsing that that began long ago but you know how it is um, if you have an accident and your enemies uh, you know enjoy this misfortune of yours you're gonna feel even if you know better, you're going to feel like they somehow caused it or responsible or could be held responsible for it just because they're celebrating it. On the other hand, I'm not exactly celebrating anything like that, but I mean, it's, it sounds even to me like a rationalization, but um, I do feel that there's a new era and inflection in world history and uh, that, you know, I'm trying to be in a current that is flowing through this inflection into the future, not one that's going to be trapped and stopped. I have nothing in this past era that uh, I need to hold on to. So, but I, I don't see how anybody could get any of that from my philosophy. I don't really understand how it could be apparent that it undermines anything worth keeping with. So this is where I'm really at a loss and curious ever to be at such a loss and to be aware of these known unknowns. Uh, thank you, Donald Rumsfeld, for the unknown unknowns, the known unknowns, the known unknown unknowns, and so on. Um, I mean, I somebody should also chime in on what, what this means. I mean, it's a very interesting subject to me. So I don't see why you wouldn't want to, art and so on. Um, so, and as for the semi-weird religious stuff, I'm just buying my time on that one. See what's going on there. That's something else. Okay. Cheers. <laughs>